Hey everyone. So some time ago I created a tutorial on how to fire IR Mavericks using the T-Pod to find targets in the Harrier. And then about three weeks later, Razbam simulations changed the way that IR Mavericks work to make them a closer match to the real thing. And the main difference is that IR Mavericks and the targeting pod can no longer be up on the screens at the same time. And there are some other smaller differences as well, which have naturally led to some confusion from people watching my video who aren't seeing the same thing in their game when they try to follow the steps. So that's led to a lot of frustration, and I'm hoping that today I can sort some of that out and give you an updated tutorial on how to use IR Mavericks in the Harrier. All right, so to prepare the jet, first thing you're gonna want is to make sure you've gone to AG Missiles and you've selected the Maverick F or IIR ASM. Request rearming. Copy. Rearming complete. Once on route to your target area, the first thing you'll need to do is cool down the Maverick Seeker head. This process takes about three minutes, so you'll want to start it well in advance, typically right after you take off. So from the left MPCD, we can go back to the main menu by clicking the center button along the bottom row, that's button 18, and then go to our stores menu, which is on the left side, button 4, and then we can select our IR Mavericks. And we can either do that by clicking the OSB up here that's labeled IRMV, or by selecting any of the stations down here which has an IR Maverick on it, so 2, 3, 5, or 6. So if I click on 3, it'll, box all f it'll select all four of those, and up here we'll see standby when station 3 is selected and standby means that the IR map is starting its cooldown process. So this takes about three minutes and then once it's ready then we'll be able to use our missiles. Three minutes later our missiles are now ready to go. So as we approach our target area there's a couple more steps before we can begin searching for a target to designate. So we have our IR Maverick selected already, but we're still in safe and we're still in nav master mode. So go ahead and uh, switch over to air to ground master mode with the little push button up here. And now you can see the IR Mav is boxed as well as the station that's currently selected is boxed. And we can cycle through which missile is currently selected with the step button over here on the right side. And that allows us to select a specific missile or pylon if we so desire. And finally, we flip, um, flip master arm up to arm, and we can see that there. So now, as far as we're concerned, our missiles are all ready to go. The next thing is to prepare our targeting pod. On the right MPCD, much the same process. We're going to go back to the main menu here with the middle button on the bottom row, and then select T-Pod. Now, I remember the T-Pod, it used to take time to cool down before it was ready, and you would see something flashing up here saying not ready. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case in the current build, or maybe I have some option for that. However, if you see this screen and you see standby, go ahead and press the button next to standby. And then you should get a screen that looks like this, and it should say Opper. If it already looks like this when you go to the T-Pod, then you're all set. To start searching for a target, we first need to get control of the targeting pod so that we can slew it around and begin to search. In most planes that you're used to, like the F-18, the F-16, and the A-10, Selecting a sensor of interest is kind of like selecting a physical device within the cockpit, whether it's the left screen, the right screen, the center screen, the HUD, or a helmet-mounted display. You're basically saying, I want whatever sensor is currently on that physical device on that screen. In the Harrier, the Harrier doesn't care where you have something displayed or if you even have it displayed at all. You're directly selecting the sensor that you want. So instead of selecting your left screen and making that the sensor of interest, you just directly select the T-Pod with a T-Pod mode on the sensor select switch. And the same for the IR Maverick. There's an IR Mav mode that you would put yourself into. And it doesn't matter, like I said, if it's on a screen or not. So in order to get into T-Pod mode, we use the sensor select switch depress, and we push that two times. And we'll see on our right screen as it goes from INS mode into T-Pod mode. There we go. Once it's in T-Pod mode, now we have slew control with the throttle designator controller, or TDC. And we can move that up and down. Now you may have already noticed that there's a, an element on my HUD that's moving around. That octagon box up there shows us where the targeting pod is looking, which is super helpful because the T-Pod tends to have a very narrow field of view, and sometimes it feels like you're searching around in the dark looking for where to begin your actual search. 
Now the other circle on the HUD, the actual circle, is where our waypoint, our currently selected waypoint is. So you can see here that we have waypoint 1 and we are 5.8 nautical miles away from it. So this circle is where waypoint 1 is and it's super helpful if you put uh, a waypoint on where you think targets might be because now all you have to do is bring that octagon, put it on top of the circle, put the thing on the thing, and you have a great reference for where to, where to begin your search. So from this point, we transition back to our right-hand MPCD, and now I can already see some targets in the frame. But just in case you can't, T-Pod controls are helpful. There's a zoom in and out on the left side screen, so MPCD uh, button, right button three is zoom out, button four is zoom in, and button five is your toggle between CCD and FLIR. I would recommend that you map these three to something. I have them on a hat switch so that I can easily do zoom in, zoom out, and toggle between CCD and that's uh, the camera display and the forward looking infrared. Now, naturally I picked the absolute worst time to do a tutorial involving infrared because the FLIR display is broken in most planes in the game right now. It's due to be fixed next month in June, so by the time you watch this it may be all good, but at least for the moment you'll probably have more luck in CCD. So, slew it around, find a target, zoom in as much as you feel like you need to, and finally we can designate the target. So by pressing our target designator or throttle designator controller TDC depress, then we'll see here now we've got some coordinates up here and we've got T-Pod des down on the bottom for designate. Um, this means we've selected our target. So now we don't need the targeting pod anymore. And it's worth mentioning, my T-Pod is still in safe, and it's still on the training laser. That doesn't matter because I'm not going to actually laze anything. I'm just using it to find because it's an easier camera with a wider field of view and better controls than the seeker head in the IR Maverick. So once I have myself designated, I don't need the T-Pod anymore, and I can back out of T-Pod mode back to INS mode by double pressing the sensor select switch again. And there we go, now we're back to INS, and you'll see Map Designate and Slave Designate. So now we're just about ready to uncage our Maverick Seeker head, but this is where things get a little bit different from last time. So in the previous video, it was possible to bring up the IR Maverick on the left screen and the T-Pod up on the right screen and have them both be visible at the same time. And you could slew them around, you could watch them independently, um, and everything worked great. But what changed about three weeks after I put up that video was that IR Mavericks can no longer be displayed at the same time as the targeting pod. So when you uncage your Maverick, it will replace the display that's currently showing the targeting pod. The other thing that's different, and I don't know if this is a bug or intended, but whenever you go uh, bring up the T-Pod display on one of your screens, or go into T-Pod mode, or back out of T-Pod mode into INS mode, uh, it will deselect your IR Mavericks. As you can see on my left side here, I've no longer got the IR Maverick selected. So, before we uncage, this is a good chance to rebox your IR Mavs, make sure they're selected, make sure you're in air to ground master mode, make sure master arm is on, that you can see that here. Make sure that your seeker head is ready. <laughs> and once you've verified all of that, then you can use the cage uncage binding to bring up the Maverick seeker head. So we'll go ahead and do that. And there you go. And now it replaces the T-Pod display over here on the right side. The Maverick controls um, are very similar to the T-Pod. By default, we're still in INS mode. We don't have any control over that Maverick seeker. So to get into IR Maverick mode, we just press the sensor select switch forward one time. Now you'll see on the screen where it says IRMV instead of INS. Now the Maverick Seeker head doesn't have uh, a CCD mode. It's only infrared, hence infrared Maverick. Um, and it doesn't have zoom capabilities. It only has a single FOV toggle, which conveniently is on the same thing that you had previously bound MPCD right button five. Uh, to toggle between FLIR and CCD on the T-Pod. So by pressing that, we can toggle our field of view a little bit. Um, and as mentioned earlier, FLIR display is broken. However, FLIR itself, infrared, is not broken. It's just the display. You're not seeing the heat signature stand out. So at this point, we have a couple of options. We can either slew the seeker head around until it snaps to a signature that it finds itself, or if we think that there's a target underneath the, the crosshairs now, which there is because it's looking in the same place our targeting pod was, we can depress the TDC, throttle designator controller, 
to attempt a manual lock. So if I just press the TDC, the crosshairs close in because it's found a heat signature. Now, like I said, the other option is to slew the seeker head around, and as we come up, it should automatically snap to, yep, there it goes, it automatically snaps to the signature once it finds one. Once the crosshairs have closed in, we know that we've got a good lock. Generally, you'll find that you can get a lock uh, below eight nautical miles. You should be able to get a lock on most things from there without too much trouble. Once you're locked, you can use your weapon release. Rifle. So back in the cockpit after rifling off the first Maverick, we're left with another one already uncaged looking in the same place as the first one, but now we can see that we're on station six. So we went from station two as our first one, we'll go to station three, after this it'll go to three and then to five. Uh, so we can basically just slew this uh, seeker head around directly and find another target. We can bring it down here and there should be one along the road somewhere, we can toggle our field of view as needed uh, and then there we go we found another target that snaps in and we could rifle off another one right away now you see as that one's gone we've already switched over to station three and we're effectively ready to start searching because the ir maverick is a fire and forget missile uh, we really don't have to worry about that one now that it's in the air we can just start searching for something else if i do that and i can start searching around there should be something around here somewhere that I can shoot. Unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult with the uh, broken FLIR display. However, I know that there's one right up here. Shack number two, and we can rifle number three off. So we don't actually have to wait for that one to impact. We can just start searching for targets. If they're all clustered together like this, uh, it should be easy to rifle off multiple in a row because it just prepares the next missile for us right away with no extra steps in between. Now with three missiles out and just one remaining, let's say we needed to go back to our targeting pod and find a new group of enemies a short distance away. To do that, we can back out of IR Maverick mode with sensor select switch forward one time, and that puts us back in INS mode. And then we can go back to T-Pod mode again with sensor select switch depress two times. That'll bring up our T-Pod again, we're looking at that same target, and now we could either slew directly to where we're going, or if it's, you know, a far enough distance away that that might take too long or be too difficult, we can bore sight the T-Pod and then realign it using the HUD. So while we're in T-Pod mode, if we press the nose wheel steering button one time, we'll bore sight to our flight path up here. And if we press it a second time, it'll then unlock it and reset it up here. And we can now take control of the T-Pod again and put it wherever we think there might be something down here. So I'm using the little upside down carrot that you see that flashes, that's an infrared or IR hotspot. Gives me some indication of where there might be a target. And so I'm gonna place my octagon over top of that hotspot and then transition back to the right screen just like we did before. Sure enough, the hotspot has pointed me pretty much directly at a BTR and we'll go ahead and designate that just like we did last time. Uh, and to get out of T-Pod mode again, it's, uh, it's sensor select switch depressed two times and that'll bring us back to INS mode. Now, like before, we've deselected our Mavericks. So we have to go into stores, select IR Mav, double check everything there, and then we can come back over here and cage uncage our Maverick. Now, kind of unfortunately, our Maverick is not slaved to where the teapot is looking now, but instead is looking at where it was last time. And so we can kind of do the same thing and use the HUD to move our IR Maverick Seeker to where we've designated a target. So to do that, first thing we have to make sure to do is go into IR Maverick mode, sensor select switch forward one time, brings us into IR Mav mode, and now we have control of the Seeker head, so we can move it around, but we don't really know from here necessarily where the targeting pod is looking currently and what it might have designated. And so to do that, we go back to our HUD. So back on the HUD, you can see that we've got a couple of new elements on the HUD. So one of them is that great big box right there, and that's our Maverick Seeker head, and we can move that around and we can see where it's pointing. And if we press our nose wheel steering button without anything locked up, the IR Maverick, we can switch our field of view. 
and it'll toggle between the big box to the little box. The other element is the diamond right here. This is what we've designated with our targeting pod. So we can see what the targeting pod has designated and we can simply put the thing on the thing. Take the Maverick Seeker head, put it on top of the IR Maverick or the T-Pod designator and see how it snaps into place and the field of view shrinks even more. And now we also see in range. We don't even need to go and look at our Maverick screen at the display to see if we can find a target because it's already snapped onto something. Now we could go over there and just verify if FLIR was working properly anyway. But since it's not, we're just gonna use the HUD. Now that we know we've locked on, we can pull our weapon release and rifle. Last one's away. All right, so last but not least, we want to do a kind of quote-unquote real pass at this. So I'm going to start by putting my AFC on and my altitude hold on so I don't have to fly the plane while I'm searching for targets. We've got 22 nautical miles, so just enough time to get everything all set up here. So on our left screen, we'll bring up the stores, box our IR Mavericks, make sure we're in air-to-ground master mode, make sure master arm is on, and make sure that our seeker head is ready. So the missiles are good to go. On the right side, we bring up our targeting pod, put it in operational mode, switch into T-pod uh, mode with sensor select switch depress two times, and now we can slew our targeting pod. So using our HUD as our reference, bring the octagon down, put the thing on the thing. Now note that we're in snowplow mode. So the, the targeting pod is going to continue to drift as the plane flies forward, and we're going to have to keep making little corrections using the HUD here to make sure we're in the right spot. To ground stabilize it, we need to designate. So we press TDC, depress to designate. Now we've got ground stabilized targeting pod and we can zoom in. There's our target, so we'll find our first one just up here and we'll designate that guy. Now we can get out of T-pod mode, sensor select depress two times, that brings us back to INS. Make sure that we rebox the IR Mavericks because they get deselected, and then we can cage uncage. Finally, make sure that we go from INS mode to IR Maverick mode with sensor select switch forward, and then we should just be able to do TDC depress, and it should be able to lock onto something. How far away are we? We are currently 12 nautical miles away, so we're actually a little out of range for the IR Maverick seeker head. Uh, if FLIR was working, we would be able to easily find targets, but since it's not, um, we just kind of have to look for it in this mess of green, and we just basically wait at this point for the seeker head to be able to pick up a lock. So I'm just sitting here clicking TDC Depress. I know that I've got a target underneath me, and I'm just waiting to see when we can get a lock. 8.5 to target. Should be more or less in range. There we go, and it snaps into place. Rifle. Now, for whatever reason, this time it put me back here on this page, so I can uh, uncage another one just by pressing cage uncage. It's put me back into INS mode, so I'm going to go up uh, sensor select forward to IR MAV mode, and I'm going to see if I can find a new target. There's one. Rifle that one off. Cage uncage. Sensor select switch forward, and then see if I can find another one right there. Rifle. Cage uncage. Sensor select forward, and then I think I can find one along the road over right there. Right about right here. Rifle. Now all of four of those are gone. One, two, three, and four. Now, I put myself in harm's way by flying directly over the targets, which is a pretty big no-no, and I probably should have peeled away sooner, come around for a second pass, but there's a look at how quickly you can rifle off several Mavericks all in one or two goes. In any case, I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and, for a change, accurate. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.